Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to play Black Magic Woman, written by Mr. Peter Green and popularized by the maestro Mr. Carlos Santana. This is going to be an intermediate level guitar lesson, and I'm going to show you how to play using target notes within the natural minor scale to create your own solos. You can play along with the backing track, which is linked below, and the full tab for my performance of this song is linked below as well, so do check that out. Let's jump into it. Let's break down the intro of this tune to begin with. Now on Santana's recording of the song, the organ plays this motif at the beginning. And I think it's pretty cool that the guitar plays that in this arrangement. So the notes are C, which is 8th fret of the low E string, open D, then open A, and then that C note again, 8th fret of the low E string, and then D, and then we go open A, B, which is 7th fret of the low E string, open D. Nice and slowly it sounds like this. right hand I'm using a little bit of palm muting to play that and I'm just using my fingers you can use a pick however you'd like to play it is fine I'm just showing you the riff so you know it it's a really cool part of the song if we don't use the muting it sounds like this it just doesn't sound very good it sounds like all the notes are ringing out against one another but if you use the muting it sounds funky There we go. So the electric guitar on top of that plays this. And that is a hammer-on pull-off from the 6th fret to the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And we're going to put a little vibrato on that note. And to get the vibrato to feel right and sound right, you're going to kind of angle your hand so that your finger is almost horizontal. It's almost perpendicular to the neck. Because if you try and do it like that, it just doesn't sound right. The classical players will tell you you have to play with your fingers uh, vertical like that, but if you want to play the blues, getting that nice vibrato is a matter of the finger almost being horizontal, just like you see. And what I like to do is I'll do a hammer on and pull off, and I'll let the note be true, and then I'll add some vibrato. Kind of like a vocalist does when they're singing a note. Okay, and then we slide from the 7th fret of the 3rd string to the ninth fret, and then down again. A little more vibrato there. We repeat that. And you could play it here, which I think I do on my performance version. It's the same notes, D, E, D, D, E, D. So whether that's the 3rd fret to the 5th fret, back to the 3rd fret on the 2nd string, or the 7th fret to the ninth fret to the 7th fret on the 3rd string. Okay, so the intro is... Then we go. Now all these notes are within the D natural minor scale. So we're just going from A and walking down, G, F, E, and then we're going to go G, F, E, D. And the fret numbers are 10th fret of the second string, 8th fret, 6th fret, 5th fret. 8th fret, 6th fret, 5th fret, and then you can play that D note on the 7th fret of the 3rd string. Once more. And 
I like to do some slides. Sometimes a little slide like this. Maybe even a little bend. It's up to you how you want to phrase that. I really encourage you to find your own phrasing in a song like this. It's not it's not necessary to copy someone else's phrasing exact, in my opinion at least. I think you honor Santana and you honor Peter Green and you honor me by finding your own way to phrase these, these melodies. From there, we go into the main riff of the song, so let's break that down next. Now the main riff of the song starts like this. And then I just improvise a bunch of solos. Santana sounds like he's improvising. Peter Green sounds like he's improvising when he's playing it. And I'd encourage you to improvise as well. I'm going to show you the scale to use to improvise. And I'll show you a few of the target notes to hit to make it sound like you're really hitting the chord changes, which is the secret to, to really sounding like you know what you're doing. So let's look at the D natural minor scale. It's going to sound like this. That's one position you can play the D natural minor scale. I'll walk through the notes for you once and then we'll describe how to use the target notes to outline the, the chords you're playing over. So we're going to start with the 10th fret there on the low E string, 12th fret, 13th fret, moving up to the A string, 10th fret, 12th fret, 13th fret, moving up to the D string, 10th fret, 12th fret, Moving up to the G string, 9th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret. Moving up to the B string, 10th fret, 11th fret, 13th fret. And the high E string, 10th fret, 12th fret, 13th fret. Walking back down. Getting comfortable with that scale is going to be one of the best ways for you to spend your practicing time, to get the best bang for your buck with your practicing. I'd recommend pulling up the backing track and using that scale, playing your own licks and lines, trying to come up with some cool interval jumps. Just have fun. That's one of the beautiful things about blues music like this is it's meant to be expressive. You're meant to express your own personality with the music. So when we're playing that intro melody, we're really following the, the vocal, got a black magic woman. Kind of loosely following the melody. So what, what we're doing there is we're going D and then C, D, C, A, C, D. And you can phrase that however you'd like. You can use a bit of a bend with some vibrato. If you do a bend without vibrato, it just sounds like you don't have control of the, the fretboard. It just doesn't sound very good, whereas if you're going, it sounds like you're a sax player that really knows how to blow that beautiful vibrato into a note. And then some kind of lick that resolves. And then we're going to go, we're going to do some kind of lick that falls into that E note, which is on the ninth fret of the third string. So the chords are going D minor to an A minor to a D minor to a G minor to a D minor to an A minor to a D minor. So we're going to outline the target notes of those chords when we're soloing. Now with the D minor, the target notes would be D, F, and A. And we can also add the C, which is the seventh note, the flat seven. So 
they're going to be kind of the target notes when we play over the D minor chord. When we play over the A minor chord, the target notes are going to change. They're going to be A, C, E, and G if we want to add that flat seventh. So they could be... And it's a case of finding these notes within the scale. So A, C, E, G, A, C, E. So those are going to be the target notes when we play over the A minor chord. When we play over the G minor chord, we're going to target G, B flat, and D. And F if we want to target the flat seventh also, which is a beautiful sound. Now that sounds like a scale, it sounds like an arpeggio, but when we start to solo, you'll hear me following the chord changes. Ready? Three, four. What I'm doing there is I'm using the natural minor scale to play just notes within that scale and I'm targeting the notes of the chords. So we start off with D minor targeting the D, F, A and C. And when I say target what I really mean is you kind of land on those notes and you emphasize those notes. So you walk up to them, you walk down to them and you kind of just target them as you're soloing. And then we go to A minor, so the target notes again are A, C, E, and G. And then we go back to D minor, which the target notes are D, F, and A. Please take notes of these target notes. If, if you'd like, it might help you to see it all written out in the paper. And then over the G minor chord, we go G, B flat, and D with a F on the top if you'd like. And the good news is, these are the only three chords in the entire song. There you have it. Those are the target notes within the D natural minor scale. You can just play the D natural minor scale over this whole chord progression. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I encourage you to just take your time playing with the backing track. Play it five times. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Get comfortable playing that scale. Try to do some slides. Some little hammer-ons. You can even add the flat five note if you want. That's a good color as well. But the most important thing is just to get used to playing that scale. And then you start to look at the target notes and that intro is a good place to begin. Going from D minor to an A minor, to a D minor, to a G minor, to a D minor, and then A minor, back to a D minor. So the chord progression of Black Magic Woman when the vocal comes in stays on that D minor goes to A minor, back to D minor, to G minor, to D minor, to A minor, to D minor. And that riff just goes D minor, A, C, C, A, C, D minor, A, C, C, A, C. Then I'm playing that A seventh fret of the fourth string and then the C fifth fret of the third string. Download the tab if you'd like. It's going to help you see everything that's going on. And that's the same riff over the A minor chord. Back to the D minor. To the G minor. D minor, to A minor, to D minor. So let's talk a little more about target notes. So those target notes on the D minor chord are going to be D, F, A, and C. 
which is the flat seventh that we can play over the D minor chord. Over the A minor seventh chord, we can play A, C, E, and G. And on the G minor seventh chord, we can play G, B flat, D, and F. And these notes are all within the D natural minor scale. So when you're soloing over the chord progression, you can land on these target notes to make it sound like your melodies have a place to go. They're going somewhere, they're resolving somewhere, it just has a, a satisfying quality to it. I'll demonstrate those target notes once more for you. From there, it's great to learn the natural minor scale all over the neck so you can play it everywhere. there is just playing that D natural minor scale all over the neck. I've learned it on every string, I've learned it in every position, and I really encourage you to learn that natural minor scale all over the fingerboard. If you've learned the major scale all over the fingerboard, then you already know it, because the F major scale has the same notes as the D natural minor scale, because they're relative major and relative minor. So the way I would suggest learning that scale all over the fingerboard will be to start in this position that I've showed you already. And then learn it in this position. And spend a week just playing each of those positions along with the backing track over and over and over again. Let's talk about how to practice. I think the best way to practice is using deliberate practice, which is pretty intentional practicing. And that might look like sitting down with the backing track, playing the entire backing track through three times and working on that one position of the natural minor scale, then playing the backing track three more times, working on another position of the D natural minor scale until you know the position so well that you can connect them like this. like that and from there I think it's good to learn the scale on one string at a time for example you might start with the second string you might play along with the backing track just on that one string playing melodies like this on every string from there you can try two strings so maybe you'll try the A string and the G string playing that scale one two three <laughs> sound isn't it cool skipping a string like that so those are a few ways to get more comfortable playing that D natural minor scale which is such a great scale to learn because like I said it has the same notes as the major scale which is like the foundational scale of music 
Western music, that is. I wanted to say a quick note on improvising versus playing written solos. So I feel that improvising is such an important skill to learn and it does take some courage to improvise because you're going to sound a bit awkward at first but that's okay. Everybody has to sound awkward before they learn how to sound sophisticated and expressive. So I encourage you to stick with learning to improvise. Really putting the time into doing that is going to be time very well spent because it's all well and good to transcribe solos. It's all well and good to learn solos exactly. I personally don't see as much value in that as many other people seem to. I think it's great to learn a lick or two from your favorite player, but then use that to fuel your own musical vocabulary, which can be developed by taking a scale, taking an idea, taking a song, and working on just trying to find things that you like within that scale, within that idea, within that song. So it's a case of using your own imagination to come up with your own solos. I really encourage you to do that. I had quite a few comments on the fact that I chose to use a Telecaster for the recording of Black Magic Woman. I think some people associate a Telecaster with country music, but I think a Telecaster is a great blues instrument. I was on the road with Mr. Robin Ford back in 2016. We had a group called the Guitar Army for a short while. It was Robin, myself, and Leroy Parnell all playing together with a great rhythm section. And I was playing a Strat mostly at that time. And Robin said, Joe, you know, a Strat, it just doesn't have a voice like a Telecaster does, like a Les Paul does, like a 335 does. And it kind of like gets lost when you're playing in a big group like that. So he gave me his SG and said, play that for a while. And I played the SG for a while. It was a 64 SG, I think, maybe a 63. And I really liked that guitar, but I, I've always been a Fender player. So I gravitated back towards playing Telecasters more and more. And I do feel the Telecaster is a great blues instrument. All you need to do is listen to any of Robin's recordings playing a telly. It's just such a great, pure, clean, true sound. So that's why I chose to use a telly on the recording. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I hope you have fun playing this great tune, Black Magic Woman. Don't forget to download the backing track and the tab.